Yes, welcome along. It is the box seat Group 1 action at Ascot this Saturday with the WATC Derby. Matty Nowlin, I bet you can't wait to get out there. Certainly can't, Marty. It's going to be a massive day of racing, obviously featuring the WATC Derby. Also the Miss Andretti Stakes and the WA Size Produce for the two-year-olds. The first kicks off at 12.30. Another glorious day for racing. A sunny with a top of 31 degrees. The track going's a good two. Penetrometer 6.1. The rail's out there in the six-metre position, so... All set for a pretty good day of racing, Marty. Thanks to Schweppes, and no doubt we'll be drinking a lot of Schweppes on the day. The first event is the Jacob Schwepp Handicap over the 1,800 metres. Time to go at 12.30, Matt, and uh, brings together a tricky little race. Certainly does. So we've got the likes of uh, Lambton Castle, who's been back at the trials. Dash Incredible dropping out of the Bunbury Cup. Friars Touch was racing well. And a good last start winner, Giants Island. We're going to go back down to Bunbury on the 17th of March and relive this victory by the five-year-old by Giants Causeway. The others at the 250. Kennedy sent Giants Island to the lead. Down the outside, Ascot Taxi and coming with Giant Bounds, Moonbound. Giants Island in front, Moonbound wanting to lay in a little 100 to go. Giants Island still a length and a half, Moonbound, and Kennedy's going to lift this home, Giants Island. Yeah, well, on that occasion, Matt, given every conceivable chance by... Ben Kennedy and I, I thought Giant Simon dominated this race. Uh, that was Moonbound down the outside in the Bob Peters colours at one stage loomed to win the race and of course Moonbound made the form look good winning the Country Bowl last week. I've always had a bit of a rap on Giants Island. I've got to say Tracy Jones seems to have this five-year-old flying at the moment. Certainly does. There's drawn well in barrier two. Other horses out of that race. Uh, Silk Force finishing fourth position and Rock Prince um, worked home to finish in fifth position. Well Silk Force I thought had every conceivable. Rock Prince was held up slightly in the straight got going when it was all over and there of the two I, I, I think Rock Prince even though uh, meets Silk Force a lot worse at the weights uh, may beat at home. All right, um, Dash Incredible. I thought his effort in the Bunbury Cup was very good. Back to the 1800. Is that the uh, the concern? Yeah, his uh, distance record: five starts for one second. But uh, he's the class dropper here. He's run in the Bunbury in the Bunbury Cup. Followed two wins at Ascot, where he was completely dominant. So uh, Dash Incredible. Uh, I'd say Kelly would have freshened him up nicely, and he's got to play a part. And uh, number 11, Smart Twister, was a good winner first up on the 9th of February. Then, uh, obviously, something must have been uh, wrong because we haven't seen him uh, since the trial on the 28th of March. And that was a bit of the Lindsay Smith of old, wasn't it, uh, preparing uh, this first off, son of Hurricane Sky noted sprinters, mm. to be able to win off a trial over 1,820 metres first up. It's a damn good training effort. He's been back to the trials, and the effort was OK yeah. uh, for a race like this, and I think Smart Twister's in the finish somewhere. All right, which way are we going in the opener, Marty? Found it a pretty uh, tricky little race. It is a tricky race. I'm going with eight Giants Island. I'd like to be able to get uh, each way odds and, and uh, be able to secure about $5 about Giants Island and uh, put him on top on an each-way basis. Race one, number eight. Race number two on the program is the Sweps Tonic Handicap. It's for the three-year-olds over the 1,100 metre distance. A good line up here, a field of 12 to face the starter. Let's go back to the midweeks. This was at Ascot on March 23 and relive the performance of Shaw Aim, who finishes second behind No Name City. Inside in the middle, Belga Boy, No Name City switching back to the inside. Shaw Aim down inside the 200. Double swirl getting up near the inside. Lady Ledette, and here comes Silver Trader. Shaw Aim digging in. Shaw Aim and now No Name City coming between them at the rate of knots. He's finishing brilliantly, and No Name City has got home to win it. Yeah, well, we're all, uh, we're all around Shaw Aim on that day off a very good trial. Jerry Hughes trains his Hurricane Sky 3 old down in Albany and uh, did everything right got taken on out in front, got driven mad in fact and was just caught late by No Name City so you know uh, Barrier Nine's going to have to work hard early but Shore Aim's got plenty of ticker but as you rightly uh, identified uh, probably three months ago he's certainly uh, got a lot of heart and, and he's very hard to get beaten uh, and get past once he gets in front Certainly he is, he's a very very tough horse and I, I do think the cutaway on that occasion was aided to No Name City and probably by the time he got to Shore Aim they're at the finish line and uh, by the time he sort of probably really saw No Name City and could fight back it was uh, race over other runners in this race, Lacey was a good last start winner. Um, out of that race, we also saw the regulator. Um, also, Lee Rani, who didn't have a great deal of luck. What are we doing with that form line? Cavallo Pazzo, another one out of that race as well. Look, Lacey just sat back in behind him, got the perfect run through, put them away very convincingly. 
she dropped, jumps three kilos in the weights and coming back to 1100 metres barrier eight just worries me a little. The regulator had appeared to have every chance. The worst run that he's put in, uh, I think Trevor Andrews just thought the, the hard two runs before that may have flattened him. Yep. Back to 11, <clears throat> back to 1100. I don't know if that suits. Lirani blew the start, was out the back. Barrier 12, Eliza Finger, it's a tall ask. And the horse that we were all over last start, Cavallo Pazzo, found the breeze. I thought he would have put them away. I'm starting to be a jury out man on uh, Cavallo Pazzo now. He is a uh, eight-start maiden. Mm. Would like to see him go to the provincials, Matty. Well, there's the ten old... races at Pinjarra on Sunday, Marty. I would have thought there would have been one race that may have suited Cavallo Pazzo. I think when you've been there eight times against good horses and you hadn't won one yet, it's time to go and get a, a kill on the board. Got to talk about Miss Tahitian. Mm. Uh, we all know how classy she is from her... Her three-year-old uh, wins and then her effort in the Belgravia when she had no luck up on the inside. I think she'd had enough when she got to the Placid Arc. But her two trials have been super. Sean Mears might pop her right into the spot where you want to be. and She could blow him away late. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think she's certainly the horse to beat, Marty. Another one from the trials, the 10 Romp to Fame. I uh, really liked the performance of uh, this three-year-old by Quest for Fame, but the barrier looks a little concerned. It does. Uh, big High striding horse, got a real high action up front. Uh, it's one race start behind Ganocchi and, and to me it looks a horse by Quest for Fame out of a Grove Namir. I think it's going to be a stayer and uh, he'd be looking for more ground. So Barry 11 expect Romp to fa fa Fame to be romping home late. And just quickly, ultimate fight. I haven't seen him since the JC Robert Stakes. Winkers off, blinkers on. Yeah, clever move here by Rob Wells. Freshen it up, put the blinkers on and uh, see if he can get a bit of sprint back into the legs. 18 back to 1100. It'll be a good training effort, Barry 10. All right, which way are we going? Another tricky race. It'll be on pace again, I think, on Saturday, looking at the weather conditions, so maybe Shaw Rain comes across Leeds and gets away with it and wins. Miss Tahitian, the saver. Radio race two, number three, Shaw Aim with the saver bet on the seven, Miss Tahitian.